Deep brain stimulation is a field that has evolved uh, fairly rapidly in the past few years because of new device technology. For patients with movement disorders, a very common question is when to refer someone for deep brain simulation. And the answer to this is more simple than people think, and it has to do with a person's quality of life. For most people with Parkinson's disease, central tremor, or dystonia, they'll reach a point where medical management is not providing the same benefits that it did previously. And it's at this stage when patients can no longer do the things they want to do that really make them who they are that um, they should consider deep brain simulation, which has very low morbidity uh, and in many cases, very high chance for success. Robotics are playing an increasing role in surgery in general and in functional neurosurgery, we use robotic stereotactic assistance uh, in order to implant things in the brain. The reason for that is to streamline the process and make it safer and more accurate for patients. Um, so we can really achieve a very high degree of precision. Traditionally, the implantation of DBS electrodes uh, has been done with the patient awake so that the target nucleus can be mapped uh, with electrophysiology in order to determine the right place uh, for the DBS electrode. But with a new technology that's been developed over the past several years, we can now position the electrode appropriately without electrophysiological confirmation by using direct targeting in an MRI scanner. And we have a vast experience uh, working with this technology. Uh, we use a, a clear point device and do uh, basically convert the MRI to operating room. This has several advantages for patients. Um, they can be completely asleep, so if they're anxious about surgery, this is no longer an issue. For patients that have severe tremor or dystonia, they don't have to worry about discomfort during surgery and the method is highly precise. There is some debate about whether a sleep or awake DBS is better. It's our philosophy that um, this isn't really debatable and we've published some of our own results showing that these two methods are equivalent and the great thing for patients is that they can now choose which approach they think is better for them and both have equal chances of success.